First of all, I also want to make a statement. I'm also a believer in sustainability. And uh, my experience is also those people are not uh, dangerous, even though they're in banking. So <laughs> I uh, worked for 25 years uh, so far in, in the financial markets, uh, 15 years of them in interface between sustainability and financial markets. So when I graduated after university, uh, I worked for banks, and uh, it, it really didn't strike me too much. So I started uh, to work on a business plan uh, of a company called Sustainable Asset Management. Uh, and that, that was my vision, to combine the principles of sustainability with financial markets. Uh, I have read at those times the books of Club of Rome. Stefan schmidt Heine was an entrepreneur in, in Switzerland at that time. And I was inspired by those thoughts. Being an economist, I didn't find uh, suppliers in the market that supplied solutions. So that uh, triggered my entrepreneurial spirit. And I thought that that might be an opportunity to start a firm uh, that is basically uh, focusing on, on sustainability uh, investing. That was, uh, that was back in, in 95, and I would like to share some of my uh, experiences during that time and some of my vision for, for my next uh, venture, which is a bank which is purely based on, on sustainable principles. So that piece of paper really changed my, my life, uh, not because it was so great was what was written there, because it turned out that everything would completely differently that we have stated in, in the business plan. It would take much longer than we anticipated. Uh, it took much more uh, money uh, than we thought, but it, it was a very interesting uh, experience uh, to build it up. And we had a few challenges because sustainability is such a long-term concept uh, and financial markets are so short-term. Uh, and I have an example here that gives you an illustration how difficult that balance is. If you are 30 or 40, you pay your monthly contribution to your pension fund, and your pension fund will pay out that amount in about 20, 30 years. And the objective of your pension fund is to enable you a life in 20, 30 years uh, to, uh, uh, to pay for your housing, for your nutrition, uh, for health care. So it has, per definition, a long-term objective. Reality today is that a lot of pension funds have a very short-term uh, focus. So they measure their performance every year, every month, every six months. Uh, they invest in companies that have a focus of maybe a year, quite often just a quarter. A lot of CEOs of companies are focused on the next quarter only. So there's a really a big gap between what their obligation is, securing our, our life in about 20, 30 years, and how they invest. So there's a gap, and, and we need to close that gap as, as suppliers in the market, and, and that's the role of a bank. Uh, another example is we have become very, very short-term oriented in how we invest our funds. What you can see here is a chart back to 1920, which shows the holding period of uh, the market, how long the market does held a share. In the 40s, 50s, 60s, up to the 80s, the average holding period was between three and eight years. Today, we're down at 11 months. So we sell our shares uh, in a portfolio, private pension funds, insurance companies, before the end of the year. So it's a huge turnover, and we have lost the, the long-term perspective. Uh, and just as a side mark, one of the most, in, uh, most successful investors and wealthiest man, Warren Buffett, he has a, uh, an investment uh, holding period of about seven to eight years. So that's an indication that we have become more short-term uh, rather than, than long-term. So coming back to uh, our initial idea of the business uh, plan, we had to, to put together a team that was willing to take the risk to build up a firm uh, that was, uh, was uh, able to take that challenge. And most important, uh, we had to find investors. And, and for those of you that start a company, uh, that's probably one of the most uh, difficult tasks uh, when you start. Uh, so you need an early mover 
that is willing to take the risk and, and give you some, some money and some credibility to start a new venture. And uh, I never forget the moment when we got a call from one of our potential investors. We were sitting in a train uh, driving to, to Stuttgart and, and the investor was calling us and saying, okay, I'm willing to invest uh, some money in, in your new uh, project. And that was really the trigger for us uh, because then it was a very good name. Uh, it was Swiss Re at that moment. And so we could use the name uh, in the market and that really helped us to find other investors. And uh, if I got a call today from, from young people, I always recall that moment and how important it is that you're open uh, to listen to, to, new, uh, to new ventures. Uh, we also had to be uh, pretty naive uh, and uh, uh, it was also positive that we were not so experienced uh, in, in uh, the, the things that we had in mind. Uh, and one, one colleague of mine, he's working in the, in the venture capital industry and he told me that uh, if you start a firm for the second time, uh, it's much more difficult than the first time because you have lost your naivety, and that is very important, that you're being naive, uh, because then you just start it and don't uh, think too much of the risks. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, if you have too much experience, then you start to become risk-averse. Uh, and th that's not a good thing to be risk-averse if, if you start a firm. Uh, so I think for those of you that are in your 20s or 30s, you have a huge opportunity and you have a time slot that maybe will close in, in your 40s or 50s because then you have much more experience and maybe too much experience uh, to, start, uh, to start a new venture. So we had our team together uh, and I always used uh, that uh, symbol here. It's a mountain uh, and it starts at base camp one you know, are far away from, from the mountain. And the first uh, and most important point is, is the vision. You need to have a vision and everybody in the team needs to, to share uh, the same vision. Uh, it's important for the people that they know whether this mountain is Mount Everest or Jettliberg. It really makes a very, very big difference. Uh, and so that's very important that you have uh, the same vision in your team. You need people that are very courage because you will be exposed. Your people will be exposed uh, because you will tell uh, things to the market that are new. So you really need people that are, are willing to take risks. Uh, what is also a very crucial element is the staying power. My experience uh, for most of the projects that we have done is uh, that it takes much, much longer than you anticipate. It takes three times longer it is uh, three times more expensive uh, than you think. So you need a team that is, that is really able uh, to, to get through to that phase. And we had a very special and, and probably very difficult business case, and I showed you the, uh, the gap between the short-term and the, and the long-term uh, dimension. Our business case was that we said, the more success, the, the more sustainable a company is, uh, the more value it has uh, measured by its market capitalization, uh, by its share price. So that was our business case. Uh, the more sustainable, the more, uh, the more value. And the market perception was exactly the opposite. That was back in 95. Now we're 2010, it has changed a bit, but still people are still a bit suspect whether, whether this is true or not. So our business case was this direction and the market had a perception that was completely the opposite. So we had to change that. Uh, so we had to think how can we uh, you know, demonstrate that what we are doing uh, makes sense, that what we are doing is successful. We needed kind of a, of a prototype here uh, to show the people it's working. Uh, in the financial markets, everything is being measured. Uh, so you need to have something you can measure. And there we had an idea, uh, let's do an index, an equity index. Uh, in the news every evening, you can, you can hear about uh, the Dow Jones index going up, going down. So we wanted to create a sustainability index uh, and demonstrate on that prototype that it's working. We developed this very big project. It was 
my most underestimated project I ever did. We have been very naive uh, because we had no clue how to do that, but we started doing that, and it turned out to be a, a really good success. So our ambition was to measure the sustainability of corporations that are listed on stock exchange and to put together a basket of companies and to demonstrate that those companies are more successful uh, than others. Uh, we were lucky enough also to have a big name where we teamed up, that was Dow Jones. So the index was called uh, Dow Jones Sustainability Index. And we worked very hard on that index. And uh, after some years, we could demonstrate that those companies are performing better than companies that are less sustainable. Uh, and we really had great success with that, uh, not only from the financial markets, but also from the corporates themselves because suddenly they paid attention uh, to the questionnaires that we sent uh, out, or if they had employees that were you know, asking questions about that. So that was, that was really something which we didn't expect, and we had a lot of interaction uh, with the companies. One example uh, is uh, Shell. Shell uh, did link their compensation packets for top management with the membership of the index. That's a high commitment uh, to sustainability. Uh, so we had a lot of, of such uh, events, and, and our analysts really had a, had a lot to do. They were lobbied also by some companies because they desperately wanted to get into such an index. But we had an impact, and corporates uh, were moving forward in their objective uh, towards sustainability. Uh, so. We had a, a lot of success with that index, a lot of investors in, invested in that, uh, but for us, the vision was that we had an impact on those corporations. They were moving up the agenda with their sustainability strategies, they were investing uh, you know, very substantial amounts of money into new technology, into cleaner technology, uh, transparency be became much more uh, important for them, and the most important thing, they couldn't go back because once you have applied such a, a strategy internally towards your employees, towards your investors, towards your clients, you have to stick to that and you have to improve. That's really something very important. You know, those companies ha had to uh, move forward uh, in, in their objective. So for us, that, that was a good success. It gave us also a platform uh, to develop other stuff that was never mentioned in the business plan, but it turned out to be one of our most important initiatives, and that also shows you how important it is to be flexible and to take other routes uh, if, if necessary. And still, today there is less than two or three percent invested uh, in, in sustainability uh, strategies. So we sold the company and we decided to launch a bank which is solely focused uh, on sustainability investing. And looking at the challenges uh, we still have compared to 15 years ago, uh, they have become much bigger today than they were 15 years ago. Uh, one example is ecological footprint, which is increasing at a dramatic uh, rate. Uh, we are using 1.5 planet today compared to one planet uh, 25 years ago uh, in Switzerland, it's about two planets a year. So, I mean, we have a heavy impact uh, and it's highly leveraged. It looks like the, uh, the debt level of Greece. They also had such a high, a high leverage. Also, demographics is not playing in, in our fields. Uh, we had a, a doubling of, of uh, population in the last 30 years. Uh, so, uh, all of them are using energy, water, electricity, uh, so there will be a heavy burden. And also in financial markets, uh, the public debt is increasing at a dramatic uh, rate. Also, uh, if you look at that from a, from a long-term perspective. So we still have all kind of, of environmental uh, challenges and we need to deleverage. If you look at all those levels we have uh, reached, we need to deleverage and we need to have more sustainable business models. And financial markets and banks play a very, very important role in that. 35% of all corporate earnings worldwide come from the financial markets. 
So in changing uh, also the economy, banks do play a very important role. And that's the reason why we have started uh, a new initiative. So we're working on a sustainable bank. Uh, what's a sustainable bank? Uh, probably if I would ask all of you, I would get 250 different uh, answers. So in our view, a sustainable bank is, is a bank that is founded on the principles of sustainable development. It's not a bank that has a product or two, it's a bank that is really based on those principles with the business model. Uh, and so we're building up such a bank, we just have applied uh, with, the, uh, with the authorities for, for the banking license, and we really try in all aspects to build up a business model that is sustainable uh, from a sustainability perspective, but also from a client's perspective. Uh, so we try to avoid conflict of interests. Bank have a lot of uh, conflict of interests. One of the most uh, uh, important conflict of interest is that they are being not only paid by you as clients, but they are also being paid from other suppliers. So sometimes they don't know exactly know for whom they're working and, and, and from whom they should get their money from. So that's, that's a very important conflict uh, a sustainable bank should avoid. Another one is transparency. Uh, there was a study in Germany uh, recently and they demonstrated that about uh, 30 to 70 percent of the fees are not disclosed or hidden. Uh, so you, you're not fully aware how much you pay for that. Uh, and so that's also an important element. One of the most important elements that we believe is that you should have an impact when investing. Most of the people that invest their money don't know exactly what is happening uh, with their funds. And uh, this morning, Robin Cornelius uh, was saying that textiles will talk, and I believe that also portfolios will talk and will tell you know, where they have to invest it, whether they had a positive or whether they had a negative impact from a sustainability perspective. So I think uh, there's a good timing for, for such a, an initiative. So we need to rethink banking. Banking has to be more embedded in, in the uh, economic and societal framework. It has to be long-term and it has to be an impact. And I would like to invite you also and encourage you in your role as clients, uh, in your role as investors, to focus more uh, on the long-term. Thank you.